If you've ever worked the late shift at a restaurant that does delivery, then you're no stranger to the occasional misfortune of receiving a last minute order, literally minutes before closing up. I did try to hint that it was going to be a big inconvenience, especially since the address was quite far away, but the guy on the phone just ignored my attempts to convince him to call another pizzeria or wait until the next day. He was oddly persistent come to think of it, but I already knew that my boss would insist that I make the delivery anyway, so I decided to fill the order and make a note of the address. It was only after adding the location to the GPS on my phone that I realized just how remote the address was, and I was already beginning to regret not hanging up the phone when I had the chance. To be honest, it wasn't really the long drive that bothered me so much, but the location. There was an old blockbuster store up ahead that had been closed for around a decade now. One of the last, I think, and I still remember going there on my bike as a kid. Never go beyond the blockbuster, my mum used to tell me. Although she never said why, but I guess she didn't really have to. Most of the other kids back then never went any further either. Of course, we all heard stories, but I guess I always figured it was just a bunch of farmers trying to keep kids off their property. That was until kids started going missing, of course, and people began locking their doors, and I remember not being allowed to go out for quite a while after that, especially alone. Not the fondest of childhood memories, but definitely something that popped into my head as I passed the Blockbuster store and drove deeper into the unfamiliar back roads. One of the things I really hate about GPS is that it makes us feel a bit too confident about driving to an area that we aren't familiar with and would probably otherwise avoid, especially at night. Something that I also forgot was how much battery life the GPS app consumed on my phone and I left my charger at home. I mean, to be fair, I don't usually drive very far or even need the GPS since most of the orders we get at the restaurant are local and close by. After about 30 minutes of navigating the tricky dirt roads and driving past some farmland, I eventually reached the destination, which turned out to be an old house that looked like it had been abandoned. The ground was still wet and muddy from all the rain we had the night before, and the location was just generally a very unpleasant place to be. I started to wonder if it was the right address, but according to the GPS, it was correct. Plus, it was the end of the road, and there wasn't much point in trying to phone the pizzeria, because everyone had already gone home by then. I'll be honest, I was really creeped out, and I was still unsure if it was the right address, so I left the two pizzas in the car to check the house just to see if anyone was home. As I approached the house, I noticed a note on the door. What struck me as odd at first is why these instructions weren't given to me over the phone. It seemed like an odd thing to leave out, and I'd never been asked to deliver a pizza to a vehicle before. In a weird way, it did confirm that I was at the right address, but at the same time, I got a strange feeling that I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Anyway, I decided to go along with it and walked around to the side of the house and was surprised to see an ice cream truck, of all things, just parked there with its back doors open. Clearly something was going on, but it definitely wasn't serving any ice creams, and as I looked closer, I could see what appeared to be a person standing behind the ice cream truck. I'm really glad that I hesitated in making my presence known, because what I witnessed next is something that still terrifies me. Getting my car to start and not getting stuck in the mud was definitely a lot less to worry about as I got clear of the muddy roads, but realizing that my phone was dead meant that I still had a long drive ahead of me, 
and plenty of time for something to go wrong. At some point it seemed like the worst was behind me, but this was far from the truth as I realized that I was being followed. Eventually, for whatever reason, the headlights faded further and further away and was no longer closing the distance between us. This wasn't enough to make me slow down though, and I just kept driving and looking in the rearview mirror expecting those lights to show up again. To this day I still wonder if I should have just kept on driving, but in the heat of the moment I didn't feel safe on the road. I couldn't help but wonder if anyone saw me and why the ice cream truck started its engines. With the combination of the dark road and glaring headlights, I couldn't be sure if it was the ice cream truck that I saw in the rearview mirror. So I parked my car behind the old blockbuster building and just waited there for a while. But that's not where it ended, because it wasn't long after that I started to hear a strange sound that just kept getting closer and closer. I couldn't make it out at first, but it turned out to be the last thing in this world that I wanted to hear that night. Luckily the sound of the ice cream truck did begin to fade away into the distance and after waiting a little while longer I finally racked up the courage to get back on the road and drive into town. Since the pizzeria was so close to the blockbuster I decided to go there first so I could call the police right away. Unsurprisingly, they didn't seem very enthusiastic about looking for an ice cream truck in the middle of the night, although the police were aware of the house and went on to tell me that it had been abandoned for years. Apparently it had become quite the hotspot for squatters and crime and advised me to stay clear of the area. It took me a while to start feeling at ease about working the late shifts again after that, but I'll definitely be a lot more careful when making any last minute deliveries in the future. And from now on, if it's too far away, I'll just hang up the phone and tell my boss it was a wrong number.